everybody. For day 25 of Commit, we're going to be moving through a leg strengthening flow, helping to make our legs leaner, more toned, more powerful, which will ultimately lead to us practicing with greater ease. Remember to like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video for a breakdown of one of the poses from today's practice. Begin standing facing the short edge of your mat in mountain pose. We're going to start with a little warm up. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, upward salute. Hands to heart. Two more times. Arms up. And fold. Half lift. And fold. Upward salute. Hands to heart. Last one. Upward salute. To forward fold. Halfway lift. And fold. Upward salute. Hands to heart. Big inhale. On your exhale, lower to chair pose. Arms up. Hands can remain shoulder width apart or come together in Kali Mudra as we gaze up towards our hands, or if this is difficult, gazing ahead of you. On your next exhale, folding to a forward fold, coming to ragdoll, allowing the upper body to get heavy, maybe even hugging your arms at the elbows here as we find a little sway in the body from side to side. Releasing the arms, make your way to a half lift, flat back, arms off the body. We're going to come up onto our tiptoes, raising the heels, engaging the legs as much as possible to hold steady here. And lower the heels. Forward fold, inhale to upward salute, exhale, hands to heart. Raise the right knee to a single leg mountain pose. Float it back to a crescent lunge, arms up. Straighten both legs, reach up high. We're gonna pulse these lunges three times. On an exhale, lowering, cactus arms. Inhale, up. Two more. Exhale, come down. Inhale, up. Last one. And up. Good, open up to warrior two. Adjust your stance as needed so that you're comfortable here. To extended side angle. Reverse warrior. Clasp your hands behind your back, lift the chest, folding at the hips to the inner edge of the front leg to humble warrior, bowing the head. Making your way to warrior one, keeping a bend in that front leg. And straighten up, folding over to a pyramid pose. Float the back knee to rest against the front calf in a Shiva squat. Keep the hands down, or if you can, you can float the hands together in Anjali Mudra. Step it back to a crescent lunge, arms up, bending through that front knee.
Let's rotate to the long edge of our mat in a five-pointed star pose. Turn to face the opposite side now in a crescent lunge. Arms up, bending that front knee. We're gonna go into three lunge pulses, lowering with cactus arms, and back up. Two more. Lower down, coming back up. Last one, lower down, and coming back up. Warrior two. Extended side angle. Reverse warrior. Clasp your hands behind your back to humble warrior. Coming up and making our way to warrior one pose, facing the short edge of our mat. Straighten the front leg and fold over in a pyramid pose. Float the back knee to meet the front leg in a Shiva squat, staying low. Hands can stay down for support or lifting hands to heart in Anjali Mudra. This time coming up from our squat, we're raising that back knee up to a single leg mountain pose. And then floating it back to crescent lunge, arms up. Rotate to the long edge of your mat in five-pointed star. Let's turn our toes out to face the corners of our mat. We're gonna go into goddess pulses, inhaling the arms up, Exhale, lower down. Two more. Last one. Coming back down again to goddess pose, we're gonna hold, deepen your breath. Raising just the left heel in goddess pose. Lower it down, raise the right. Lower it down and return to standing, squaring off your feet, taking the heels behind the toes. Hands to your hips, flat back to a standing wide-legged forward fold. Lowering the hands between the legs, trying as much as possible to line up the heels of the hands with the heels of the feet, bowing the head. Hands to hips, flat back, return to standing. Taking your hands together at heart center. Let's move over to the right side in a skandasana pose or side lunge. Using your hands for support here if you like, pressing up to standing and then lowering over to the left side. We've got three more on each side. To the right. To the left. Again, using your hands for support as much as you like to here. Over to the right. And to the left. To 
the right. And left. Return to standing. Shimmy your feet in to meet each other at the center of your mat. Let's lower to a toe stand, raising the heels as we come down. Hands can come down to the mat here for support if you like. down let's make our way to kneeling with our knees wide coming to the tops of the feet toes together hands together at heart center we're going to raise the hips squeezing through the glutes and lower back down four more times coming up and down three more Two more. And last one. Bringing the knees together, come up to kneeling and send that right leg out to the side in gate pose. Right hand on leg, side stretch to the right, reaching the left arm up and over. To the other side, left hand down to the mat, right arm reaches up and over. Coming up to center, hands together. We're going to lower and lift the hips six times. Five, four, three, Two, and last one. Draw the right leg back in. Let's send that left leg out to the side. Left hand to leg, side bend, reaching the right arm up and over. Over to the right side, left arm reaches up and over. Coming up to center, hands together in Anjali Mudra. Let's lower and lift the hips six times. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pull that left leg back in. I'm just gonna turn to the side here so that you can better see what I'm doing. We're going into kneeling leans. So taking the big toes together, knees should be about shoulder width apart, hands together ahead of us in Kali Mudra. Keeping the body as straight as you can, lean back as far as you can without bending in the hips, and then squeeze as much as you can through the legs to bring yourself back upright. We've got five more. Four, three, two, and one. Good, let's make our way down to seated in staff pose. Legs extended together ahead of us, toes pointing up. Place your hands down at your sides for support. Let's point through the right toes. We're gonna lift and lower the right leg six times. Five, four, three, two, and one. Flex the right foot, point the left toes, lift and lower the left leg six times. Five, four, three, two, and 
two, and one. Good, bending the knees, let's recline down onto our backs, feet about hip width apart, arms at our sides. We're gonna go into some slow and controlled bridge pulses, raising the hips for a count of five, and then lowering for a count of five. Just before the tailbone touches down, let's bring it back up for a count of five. We've got five more. And lower down, slow and controlled. Four more. Moving with our breath, keeping it strong. Three more. Two more. And last one. Before the hips touch all the way down, let's bring it back up and hold. Let's get really, really strong here through the legs. We're gonna be holding this bridge for about a minute. Deep in your breath. If it becomes too difficult, you can lower down for a short rest and then come back up if you think you can. Holding for five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. And lower it all the way down. Draw your knees in, rocking the body a little bit from side to side. Holding on to that right leg, let's extend the left down onto the mat. Switching sides, left leg in, extend the right. Good, going into our reclined pigeon, taking right leg over left, drawing that left leg in towards us. Release and switch sides, left leg over right. Release, grabbing onto both feet now. Let's extend both legs together, bringing them as straight as we can. Rolling up to a seated position. Make yourself comfortable here as we take a few deep breaths to finish up. Let's take a look at Skandasana or our yoga side lunge. This is a pose that helps to improve our core strength and our balance, and it helps to stretch the hips and the hamstrings. There's lots of different ways to get into this pose, to hold this pose, and so I think it can be a little bit confusing not knowing what we're supposed to do when we see it done so many different ways. So let's start in a wide stance. And we're just gonna start easily and then progress to a more difficult variation. 
So the first thing that you can do is put your hands down on the mat for assistance as you bend that leg. And now you'll notice that my hips are in line with my knee and I'm not lowering them all the way down. So this is always an option. If you feel like you lack mobility to even keep your heel down in that position, you can lift your heel onto the toes here and keep your hands down for support, okay? So the next way that you can get into it is by placing your hands on your legs, going into the bed here and holding. Always an option. And then to challenge yourself a little bit further, taking hands to heart. And so it's as simple as that. We don't need to go any further than this. So you'll notice a few things. My knee is pointing in the same direction as my toes. It's not turning in, it's not turning out here. So it's still facing the long edge of my mat. And so are my hips. So that's something that we wanna make sure. Proper alignment here is the knee and the hips stay squared off to the long edge of the mat. Good. The next thing we wanna make sure we're doing is keeping that core really, really tight and keeping the spine long. So we're not curling through the spine or rounding out the back and we're not arching either. So a nice flat back, tight core. If we wanna come all the way down, we're gonna lower the hips, and my heel just came up here, that's totally okay. You can keep your hands down in this position and hold it here if this is where you're at. So the next thing we wanna to work towards doing in Skandasana is rooting through the extended heel and turning the toes up. This is gonna challenge your balance a little bit further. So if it's really difficult and makes you fall over every time, you can keep that foot down here and take your hands up to challenge your balance this way. And then every now and then, try to flip those toes up and challenge your balance until you can hold it there. If you can, lower that back heel. And then some of the arm positions are a little bit more difficult to do here when you've lowered the heel. If you're gonna keep your knee and your hips squared off to the front. So to remain in proper alignment, sometimes even if you can lower that heel, I prefer to stay up on the toes because I can do a little bit more with my arms. I'm more open here and I have a lot more options and a lot more freedom of movement, if you will. So just because you can go further doesn't mean that you need to. Okay? And this is actually working my cat a lot. So I'm gonna switch sides right now just to even out my body. Once we're down here, there's things that we can do with our arms, different positions that we can hold with our arms. So I'm just gonna keep my toes down to balance myself a little bit better for now. And if you want, you can point those toes to the long edge of your mat, or you can turn them towards the short edge of your mat. So play around with your foot positioning there. You can take hands to heart in Anjali Mudra. We can lift the arms up overhead. We can go into a retreating warrior, or we can open up the arms and face that extended leg. Again, we're pressing the hips forward to the long edge of the mat. So this is a really intense twist here that's happening because right now my hips really want to open up towards that extended leg. Good, or you can keep your hands down. Always up to you. So another variation, another thing that we can do in Skandasana here is to go into a bind and twist. So we're gonna take this arm here, same arm, same leg. We're gonna take it to the inside of the leg, wrap around the knee, and bind the hand behind the back. And then we turn and we gaze up. Good. So if I want to do that on the other side, I have a couple of options. So I can take my hands down and help me walk over to the other side. I can challenge myself, stay low, hands to heart, push to the other side, or I can challenge myself even more and press all the way up to standing and then over to the other side. Good, so again, going into that twist, we're gonna wrap around the front, you bind, turn the toes up, and you fall back. So you have this at right. So I'm gonna keep my toes down this time, but I'm gonna point them towards the short edge of the mat and get a little bit deeper into my twist. So you can definitely play around with shapes here and kind of make it your own. So to modify, so let's look at some ways that we can modify 
this lunge if we're having a really hard time with it or if we're just really not comfortable in it. So you can take a rolled up mat, blanket, towel, anything that you can prop your heels up on. Even your block, but that's a little stiff for these purposes. And position it where your heel is gonna be. And use it as support underneath the heel here. And all right here, I feel like I have so much more balance to just play around with the arms and get to know the pose a lot better. So this is something that you can try. Another option here, if you wanna to try to lower that heel, but you feel like you're gonna fall back is you can allow yourself to rest down on a block and I'm still feeling a really really intense stretch through this extended leg here I'm still getting a lot of the benefits from this pose but I'm relying less on my core strength and I'm not really having to balance much so there are some elements these benefits of this pose that we're not quite getting when we are modifying in this way but then there are some that we are getting so it's completely up to you and where you're at in your practice right now. As always, listen to your body, do what it's telling you to do, and above all else, enjoy your practice.